Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the Triassic, Pseudosuchians exploded in terms of ecological diversity, producing a whole host of bizarre and novel forms, ranging from massive apex predators to bipedal beaked omnivores that superficially resembled ornithomimosaurs. Some lineages increasingly turned towards herbivory, with a major example of this trend being the Aetosaurs. These bulky, heavily armoured quadrupeds were devoted herbivores, inhabiting a low browsing niche that would later be inhabited by the stegosaurs and ankylosaurs in the following Jurassic period. In outward appearance, Aetosaurs differed significantly from their closest living relatives, the crocodilians, not only in possession of fully erect limbs and sharp pointed osteoderms, but also by their small leaf-shaped teeth. The group originated during the Middle Triassic and were native to what is now Europe, the Americas, Africa and India. All currently described genera range between 1 and 5 metres long, that is roughly 3 to 16 feet, with comparatively small skulls that tended to curve upwards at the front, giving the animals a somewhat pig-like appearance. The limbs were arranged in the so-called pillar erect stance, also seen in related Pseudosuchian groups a formation where the femur is supported by a downward-turning projection of the hip bone, creating a structure reminiscent of a weight-bearing pillar. In addition, all Aetosaurs were very heavily armoured, with their bodies covered in dense and sometimes sharp osteoderm armour, serving to protect these slow-moving herbivores from predators. Although the first definitive Aetosaurs are late Triassic animals, their fairly basal position on the Pseudosuchian phylogenetic tree indicates that the group originated during the early Triassic. Recent studies have suggested that the genus Rivueltosaurus is the sister taxon to Aetosauria, located just outside the clade. This animal dwelt in Carnian and Norian stages of the late Triassic in New Mexico, Arizona and North Carolina, being a squat herbivore measuring about a metre long. For many decades, the only known remains of Rivueltosaurus consisted of teeth, which were leaf-shaped and clearly adapted for processing plant matter. However, this tooth shape led paleontologists to consider the genus to be an early Ornithischian dinosaur instead. More complete fossil material proved this theory to be incorrect, and revealed an image of a blunt-snouted animal with robust lower jaws and a broad, stocky body. It is therefore likely that all true Aetosaurs evolved from forms very similar to Rivueltosaurus. The most basal Aetosaur was the genus Aetosauroides, another modestly sized animal recovered from late Triassic deposits of Argentina. All other members of the group belong to a single large family, Stagonolepididae, containing two subfamilies, Aetosaurinae and Desmatosuchia. The former contained genera that were smaller than the latter, with many Aetosaurines only known from fossilised osteoderms. Aetosaurus itself was a basal member of the subfamily and was rather small, measuring just a metre long. Dwelling in North America and Europe, the genus possessed a lighter covering of osteoderms than more derived Aetosaurs, lacking spikes or protrusions. A couple of genera are known from more substantial fossil material, including Typothorax, a six and a half foot long animal from late Triassic North America. Unlike some larger Aetosaurs, Typothorax did not possess shoulder spines, but instead bore a pair of spiky osteoderms on the neck. Like all Aetosaurs and many other early Pseudosuchians, Typothorax had erect hind limbs held beneath the body. This is evident by the straight femur, an anteriorly directed foot, and the projection of the surface of the ilium over the femur. Because the length of the femur is almost equal to that of the tibia, Typothorax is probably slow moving. The forelimbs are reduced in size and were directed outward in a sprawling position. This posture is also seen in ankylosaurs and ceratopsians. Several aspects of the forelimbs have been interpreted as adaptations to digging. Like many digging tetrapods, the radius is significantly shorter than the humerus. Like other aetosaurs, there is a prominent deltopectoral crest on the humerus. The feet are also short and wide, a characteristic of digging animals. The genus therefore was likely not a specialised digger, but would have also been capable of rooting around in the soil in a manner similar to modern pigs. A closely related genus, Paratypothorax, has also been described from late Triassic deposits of North America and Germany. 
The other major Aetosaur subfamily were the Desmatosuchians. Among the most basal was the genus Stagonolepis from the Carnian of North America, Germany, Poland and the UK. In life, the animal measured about 3 metres, or 10 feet long, possessing a heavily armoured body and a comparatively small triangular skull. It had no teeth in the front of the jaws, but instead had a beak-like tip that arched upwards. This would have allowed it to uproot plants while digging. The peg-like teeth at the back of the mouth would have been suitable for chewing tough vegetation, including horsetails, ferns and cycads. A more derived and rather more unusual Aetosaur was the South American neo aetosauroides Known from several complete specimens recovered from Argentina, it has been proposed that this genus possessed a diet and lifestyle quite distinct from other members of the group. While most Aetosaurs had very strong jaw muscles which were nevertheless incapable of snapping shut, neo aetosauroides had somewhat weaker yet faster moving jaws. Quick jaw movement is sometimes utilised by herbivores for cropping plant material, but it is more commonly associated with carnivory, as it allows small animals to be caught more easily. While neo aetosauroides lacks the large fang-like teeth present in specialised carnivorous reptiles, it also lacks many traits consistent with herbivory, such as a beak or dental wear facets. It was therefore proposed that the animal may have had a generalised diet of soft-bodied colonial insects, supplemented by the occasional small vertebrate. This diet is similar to that of modern armadillos and aardvarks, which also have a similar body shape. The largest Aetosaurs are members of the derived tribe Desmatosuchini. These included the 3 meter Longosuchus of Morocco and the US, the New Mexican Leucosuchus, and the massive Desmatosuchus of Late Triassic Texas. The latter measured up to 5 meters, 16 feet long, and weighed about a ton, being the largest Aetosaur genus so far described. The animal was heavily armoured, with a distinctive pair of recurved, blade-like osteoderms present above the shoulders. While relatively complete specimens are known, Desmatosuchus is best known from plentiful osteoderm material, which are so common in some regions that they are utilised as important index fossils. This suggests that the genus was commonplace in life, perhaps moving across the landscape in social groups. There have also been suggestions that Desmatosuchus possessed sexually dimorphic traits, although this is notoriously difficult to demonstrate in extinct archosaurs. Several Desmatosuchus bones have been found amongst skeletons of the large contemporary predator Postosuchus, suggesting that the latter preyed on the former. Despite their success in the Triassic, the Aetosaurs are one of the main casualties of the extinction event that ravaged the world at the end of the period likely caused by the tectonic instability engendered by the breakup of Pangaea. Rising temperatures and rapid aridification reduced suitable habitat for these animals, with many larger Pseudosuchians being pushed into extinction. In their place, dinosaurs would rise to become the dominant terrestrial archosaurs, with the Thyreophorans gradually moving into niches vacated by the Aetosaurs over the course of the Jurassic, eventually producing the equally heavily armoured Stegosaurs and Ankylosaurs. Thanks for watching everyone. In the next episode I'll be covering the Gomphotheres, a distinctive lineage of Proboscideans. See you again soon. Cheerio.